Welcome to Salon Talks. I am Mary Elizabeth Williams. It's a Girls Gone Wild story, but the girls are all approaching their half-century mark. It's a new Netflix comedy that takes Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, Maya Rudolph, oh my god, Rachel Dratch, Emily Spivey, Anna Geis, Gasteyer, and our guest, Paula Pell, on a memorable weekend through, it's called, wine country. You know, Paula Pell, maybe you, if you don't know her, you've at least seen her work. She's a writer, producer, and actor. You know her work from SNL. 18 years on SNL? Yeah, oh, 18 years? about 18, on 18 yeah. 30 Rock, the movie Sisters, which I love. Uh, and you know her as an actor from shows like Love, AP Bio, Smilf, and I'm going to ask you so much about documentary oh, now. Oh, please. Uh, Patton Oswalt calls her the funniest person on TV in terms of That's acting and writing. That is no small compliment to be the funniest person on TV in the estimation of Patton Oswalt. Hi, Get Paula. Hi, how are you? All right, I am. I don't know if I can live up to this. Now, okay, now be funny. Do people say that to you? Do people oh, go like, yeah, oh, you're a comedy sure. writer? No, go, my friend be would, funny. C would bring me to my other, to other friends that I didn't know and go, be funny. <laughs> Do your thing, trick pony. Do your shtick. It's not like juggling. Uh, like, it's not like a thing you can just kind of, uh, give me three balls and I'll do it, right? I have a real memory of, of being in high school and doing some, and I have no idea what I did, but I did some imitation, and it was of a, of a butt. <laughs> and, and my friend just dragged me to people I didn't know and went, do your butt! <laughs> and I'm like... Now was it an auditory or was no, it a, it was, was it a something visual? With my mouth. Was it I don't want to get. I don't want to <laughs> dig any deeper. You don't either, for sure. <laughs> no, I. You know what? I never want to dig deeply when it yeah. comes to butts. No, no. Really. Stay out of there. <laughs> to the extent it's that good it's good for possible. you know at a distance, just in theory, but oh. stay out. Stay out of the. Yeah. That, you know what? I'm getting a lot of life. <laughs> We're gonna cut this down and it'd be like life advice from Paula Bell. What if that was my self motivation <laughs> before I ever go on stage? Do your butt. <laughs> just, go out there and you. you Butt. Give that butt. You do your butt. <laughs> you, because no one else in the world, Nobody Paula, can do your butt. Can do that butt like you. Paula, I want to ask you about yes. this amazing film that is just so sweet. It's hilarious. It has it. so much heart. And, you know, I don't even want to spoil it, but there's an homage to a television legend in it that just yes. makes my life complete. You are all, all of the women involved in this, your director is Amy Poehler, you've all worked with each other for years and years and years, and this really came out of your relationship with each other. Yep. Can you talk a little, it takes place over a weekend, it's the 50th birthday, Rachel mm -hmm. Thratch's character, all these women from disparate lives and views, you know the, you know the setup, we've seen it before, yep. and they're going to come together, and they're just going to drink a lot and mm -hmm. be silly. Say things they might, sh maybe shouldn't. Say, start start sentences with, I just want to say yeah. something. Can I just say something? <laughs> it's like, nope, shut that shit down. That That's going to go somewhere nothing bad. Nothing good ever falls. Uh, well, this, this actually is based on real trips we took. We took two trips for two of our little tribe's 50th birthdays. I'm owed a retroactive, because I'm 56, so I'm owed... Uh, a retroactive one so we're kind of planning that now so we're gonna go on a on another one but whenever anyone turns 50 we we all planned this and we did it for Rachel Dratch's in wine country and we did it for Anna Gasteyer's in Palm Springs and so many things happened during those weekends that you know a Amy Poehler and and Emily Spivey who Emily wrote the movie with Liz Kakowski uh, another Who's also writer from SNL, and she's also really funny as one of the wine, <laughs> wine tour people, um, and and those two, you know, spoke to Amy about it, and Amy was like, "Oh, we need to make a movie out of this because it just felt so real and so, it was just everything about us being where we were at right now in our lives, and it was hilarious. And there are many true things in the movie that actually happen, including me buying everyone high end." Vibrators. I want to ask you about that. Yes, That's actually do. on my list of questions that I prepared today. You spent almost a thousand dollars. I did. Although it's not hard to spend. No, not with the not, new not, technologies. Right. There's a lot of like you can get them like Wi-Fi. Oh my God! I went to a place here a couple years ago. Just walking by, there's a place called the Museum of Sex somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, in Midtown. Very close. Or, it's yeah, actually very, very close. close. And we walked by and we're like, oh, let's check that out. And the front part of it, you know, they sell all these really, it's like the Apple store for your genitals. You go up to the genius bar. Yeah. <laughs> and say my, my genitals aren't working. You, Do I turn you, them on uh, and off? 
can you set this to factory settings, please? Because <laughs> I've gotten it way too uh, in, in, intricately set. Um, it was set for someone else, and I want to <laughs> get factory settings. No, we went in and... Because I got a refurbished one. <laughs> <laughs> do not buy a refurbished one, ever. <laughs> just don't. Just spend the money or don't do it. Sit, sit on a washer during the spin cycle. Anyway, <laughs> hi, Mom. Um, but... They they showed us all the, the you know all the people working there were young and like wore little outfits with Museum of Sex and they were just so in their bodies about sex which is completely opposite of how I grew up and this girl was just like yeah what are you what are you looking for what do you, what can I show you what's let me tell you what's new and she showed us a, a vibrator that had magnetic lengthening technology and it would do this instead of like just vibrate <laughs> it actually lengthened like this it was the most bizarre thing on earth but yes i bought what I is went, the advantage of that i, I mean I, I don't know i did i i, mean, I, I actually I, bought it it was ridiculously expensive and then lost it somewhere <laughs> very quick so somebody someone was somebody lost. stole it that was installing my cable at my house <laughs> i was gonna say did you lose it in your home or did you like leave yeah. it in a restaurant yeah no i i bought all those toys and i knew that i was going to give them to everyone as a gift and and i got rachel the nicest one the most elaborate one because she was the birthday girl she was the birthday girl and i put them all in my carry-on which i can't believe i was able to check that bag or even go through this you're on a list thing. now though i know you are. i'm definitely on a list because you, know, you can only have two bags and four dildos in a in, <laughs> in uh, most major airlines, and I brought. They bought, the I brought, yeah, about it when I you brought, check in. Yeah, you can. The dildo has to fit in the in the thing that's only this big. Anyway, oh boy, I just went. I went blue so quick on this <laughs> interview, but uh, I brought batteries and everything. And I remember Amy making the joke. It was like just after dinner, like seven o'clock. She's like, "Okay, good night." <laughs> And, um, and it was just, Dilda Claus just came out of that, of me making a beard with paper towel in the kitchen and taping it to my face and sneaking around and, and somebody turning on Christmas music. It wasn't Christmas at all. And I came out as Dilda Claus and gave everyone. And so they put, you know, Amy, Emily and, um, and Liz put that in the movie. And it was so funny because it was one of the first days we shot and we got there to the set and there's this poor prop person with like all these vibrators at, with like little party hats on them and all this stuff and, and she's got them laid out and she's you know indexing and she's like you want to go over all the different I'm like because <laughs> you know, at SNL we used to have times where you'd write the most ridiculous thing like a you know a Dyson toilet or something just ridiculous and then she has an be actual there. sketch it is <laughs> and then you just sit there you know like with the prop people having a very serious conversation about now when you flush it I want the you know the prosthetic butt to go down like it was such classy, classy world of comedy and so I remained what, there in that's that spot, you, sweet spot, my sweet spot. That's what you've brought. And then after you pass out the the after dildo claws passes yes. out, then it's dildo clock. Dildo clock. Right? <laughs> dildo clock. Right. Oh my god, I gotta use that. Right. Instead On the of next wine country, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> right. That's I instead like instead of happy hour. Can you hear us? It's dildo clock. We I, I gotta say dildo clock. Thank I will, you. I will. Definitely credit you. No, oh, thank you. Every time. <laughs> I, I You'll don't, get 17 cents I every year. I don't want you to use it unless <laughs> I'm going to get the proper attribution because I want that to be on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> You'll I get need. a giant clearinghouse check, but it's only 17 cents. <laughs> it's a true residual. Sometimes at SNL, you'd get a residual for like 32 cents for something that you did back in the day when you didn't have any gray hair. Back in the day. So, speaking of back in the day, yes. this is, you've described this, I'm going to keep it classy, as uh, as a project propelled by the Vagina Mafia, I believe. Oh, the <laughs> vaginal, vaginal Mafia, I'm sorry, yeah. I want to get it right. The Vaginal Mafia, yes. which is different from, I, I would imagine, almost anything else, even though you've worked on very female-driven projects like Sisters, yeah. and you are the person who is often called in to punch up scripts and make the women uh, human, mm -hmm. I guess, is, yeah. is part of the task, yeah. right? But how, like, what is it like coming into an environment with all of these women you know, you respect, you've worked with, you've collaborated with, as opposed to some of the other things you've done, including SNL? Yeah, I mean, it was really effortless it, it was a lot of work because shooting a movie is a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of very long days and you know but compared to most other jobs on the earth is you know one of the most uh we're so grateful for having these jobs 
but when you when you work with people that know your language it's just everyone knows each other so a lot of my friends that I, I loved when people commented after seeing screenings of it that knew me and knew my friends at SNL and they would say you're laughing at each other like you laugh at each other Aww. because when you're an actor and you're laughing in a, in a thing it's fake everything is so fake unless an actor is really amused by another actor in a movie and they're really kind of you can tell they're really laughing but you can tell when people are you know I, when I did this is 40 uh, Judd and Leslie's real kids played the kids and <coughs> excuse me and it was so funny because people would go oh my god you just can't fake it because you can't fake that level of the language you just know exactly what each other you know how to talk to each other but you also talk like you're so enmeshed because you spend all the air uh, you share all the air in a in a home together and that's how we did at 30 Rock, you know, we were just, those, those offices are like little dorm rooms with stinky couches and we slept there and were there longer than we were in our tiny apartments back in the day. So we just, and, and then Amy, Emily and Liz just wrote such a, a perfectly crafted script, but it, it just felt easy because it was us, you know, it was the approximation of us. There's a lot of things in it that were added for dramatic effect in terms of just it being a movie. Like, I think Amy said if it was, if it was, uh, or I think Anna said if it was our real self, sometimes it would be not as exciting a movie because we just sit and talk about life. It would be an interesting little indie movie of like a dinner with Andre type thing mm -hmm. where we're just really in talking for a long time. But um, so things were heightened. We, we didn't have storm off fights in the movie. It, I mean, in real life. Uh, but it was fun to... Can you run like that, though? Uh, I, I may have had a stunt double. Because your but, character yes. has, has, speaking of the phrase that comes up again and again in the film, things we say now, yes. which is something that happens in middle age. You yes, start talking about, like I said, do you remember that guy? He died. He died. He did, right, that is a thing that I didn't hear. Oh, my hear. God, I saw Tom <laughs> in his coffin. <laughs> Uh, right, and suddenly you are wearing the sleep apnea uh, mask, yes. and oh, your yes. character has a brand new knee. But yeah, she's, well, two knees, two knees, and I and she rocks them. Uh, uh, Emily wrote that because I got double knee replacements, and I when I went on one of the trips, I did not have the knees yet, so I could not walk. Maybe I could maybe walk a block. So when we would go do stuff, it always had to be like I'd get in a cab meet them where we're going, because they just wanted to go, you know, or, right. or they'd ask me, like, what, what are your limitations on this? We don't want to do an activity if you can't do it or whatever. And then the second time was after I got my knee replacements. And, and then it was you were like, pretty, I just want to do squats all yeah, day. Yeah, every day. But it was pretty early on when I did the second trip. So we had this wonderful moment in the real trip where, where uh, Tina said something and I can't remember exactly what it was right at this moment, but she said something to me that was like a little, a little hilarious jab that was truly hilarious. And I turned to her and I went, oh, I'm going to fucking, oh, you better run. And she ran, she said it and she knew I was going to chase her. And I realized after I chased her that I had not run since I got my knees and we all cried. Like Amy did a toast at dinner and she was like, I just want to say, Paula ran and chased her down, the, and we all were like, oh, because we, it's so I, I was so afraid to run. I was so afraid to even jog or anything after those knee replacements for many months, and I couldn't anyway for a long time. But when you finally start getting strength and, and they settle in, it, it was just like, holy shit, I, I chased her all the way down the street. It was really cute. That's a beautiful moment Yeah, it was friendship. really beautiful. When you can, you can actually chase down your friends yeah. after they've after they've jabbed you a little bit. And even the, you know, trying to get my my mojo back as Val in the in the movie I I spent 4 years after my first uh, marriage of 17 years with my first wife, uh, 4 years of really sad like post divorce like loneliness and being an older woman I lived in LA, I moved to LA and being an older gay woman in LA and so they, they really wrote Val with a sweetness of, of I'm ready to have love, I'm ready to open myself up 
you know, whether it works out or not, I, I'm going to be courageous. And I think every character in the film has this really lovely, beautiful, authentic yes. arc. Yes. And your char and people have been talking about it. It's like every review I read, they really single out your character's well, plot, that's... her story. Yeah. Because well, it is, I think also it's a, fil a familiar one yeah. to a lot of us. It's and, like, how and do I start And familiar, and what I love about it is it is so familiar and isn't a gay story. You know, it, it's so nice in this movie to just, we're at the restaurant, I see this server and I'm like, did you hear she said girlfriend? And and you don't even call it, it's not, you know, because so much of of any kind of writing with gay characters usually was and sometimes is still of like, here's the gay character, <laughs> here's the other, right. we'll tell their story, which is about gay love or gay divorce or gay and it's just like, yeah, no, it's a woman that was with the same person for many, many years and now isn't and and is lonely and looking to the future and thinking they're going to be the old maid that you know is a good aunt and and that's about it and doesn't have uh, just keeps adopting more dogs and cats which I still do now and I'm engaged to a wonderful person but I congratulations thank you I still keep I still keep but, uh, adopting dogs but you and still got to get those those dogs and cats so I want to ask you about this because this this is a, a story that is about women finding themselves in this place mm -hmm. in life where the world is not always particularly nice to you mm -hmm. and it is hard for a variety of reasons and we see these characters going through it with their careers with their marriages mm -hmm. with their health stuff that you've never dealt with before in in your life just your mortality you know your mortality the first right? time you have a person your age die of something that isn't like getting hit by a bus mm -hmm. where you just go oh yeah that happens when I was young I remember people dying when they People's were 50 dads, you know? yeah. right? yes yes yeah and you go oh I'm that age oh that's that could happen but you know? the other side of that is you have said that you're a person who feels like you were born at 50 yes and now you're you're coming into this time in your life where we are having what someone on Twitter described as the Paula Pellison that is the cutest thing which I love seen. and believe me of all of the words to describe this era in which we are living I am clinging to <laughs> I'm going to remember it as the Paula Pellis. <laughs> that's that's There's what. There's got to be something in the history books that's positive. I want to write the book era. about the Paula Pellis songs oh, and just God. ignore everything else. It does feel like this is a this is a different moment in your career. You you are stepping up and doing more acting roles. You are really coming out from behind the um, your laptop and and doing more of this kind of work. How is that? What is it? Did you make a conscious decision? Now I want to be performing more. You know, I didn't. I I was always an actor when I was young, and then I was you know always doing theater. Got my degree in theater. I want to do this as a living. It th you know, uh, started to after college being like a young actor and, and got some good sort of. Uh, mid-range jobs money wise in terms of just being able to survive like I went back to Orlando and and uh, performed at Disney and the theme parks and sang at night and did a lot of fun things there and did commercials and you know I was just hustling I was a young excited like I'm an actor and then when I got <clears throat> when I got the SNL job through being in this pilot and you know, I got there and was just realized how many people they hire that have an acting background because we're so enmeshed there. We actors and writers write together in just a wad. You know, you're in either yourself or two of you or three of you are sitting in an office writing something, and maybe one or two of you are actors and one is a writer. And there's no boundaries of of what's what. There's not like a writer sitting there and the actors waiting for the script to arrive. It's everyone's doing it together. So when I got there, they basically said, you have to put that hat away. You're not, you know, not to me, but just to all of us that were actors. Like this is not a, a, a time to sort of secretly take over and all about Eve it and come in and just like, you know, take over the, the acting part of it. There's a full cast. We're all starting new. Just do, you know, bloom where you're planted sort of thing. And I was such a good kid and like, wanted to always just achieve where I've been put and didn't have that part of me ever, that agency of like going, you know, yeah, well, fuck them, I'm gonna be on camera. I had no desire even to do that because I was so in awe that I got to be there and that I got to do a job and that I was gonna learn how to write for other people because I'd always written just for myself or writing just little short stories or different things. So I really put it away, but it was always a part of me. But then years later, you know, they would put me in the monologues to have like one line or something. And you'd be so nervous because it's live TV, you have one line. And I'm like, okay, I haven't acted in this many years. Now I have one line. There's five million people watching, including my family at home. 
and it's live and you're screwed if you screw it up. And I would sometimes stumble on something and then just for the entire rest of the weekend just be devastated because it's just like, oh God, you can't, you can't even do it anymore. You've lost your ability to do that, that that felt so normal to you, so natural to you. I used to never have trouble with lines, anything. And I went through this period in the middle there where it had been so many years that anytime I got hired to even do a little bit, I would get so nervous. And then I started doing bigger things and it, it was all with my friends and I just got older. You just get older and you start going, don't put yourself through that. Just enjoy it. Be in the moment and, and go, oh my God, I get to hang with all my friends today and get paid to do something ridiculous and funny. Yeah, I think the older you get, uh, you just kind of run out. You just stop giving a damn. Oh my God. My, mom, give, my mom's 81 and she's here for the premiere and all that. And she's so hilariously unfiltered now. I mean, both my parents are, but it's just so funny how unfiltered she is now where she'll go, oh, that was terrible. She'll just say something now that, you know, she doesn't care. Cause it, and she's completely kind, wonderful person. But if she has an opinion about something, it's cold in here. You know, just something that I used to just walk, talk around until I never even got to the point because I was so afraid of offending or, you know, burdening or now I'm like, it's cold in here. It's cold in here, yeah. right? Okay, I, before we go, I want to ask you about that because your mom has also been a big inspiration yeah. in some of the, the, the characters that you've created. Yeah. My mom and dad both, in, in Sisters, I wrote them as my parents, you know, uh, uh, James Brolin and, um, help me out, James Brolin and Diane Weiss, Jesus. Oh my God. I, I was I know her name, but I just said Diane. So James Brolin and things that happen. Things, yes, we, things say now. we say now. <laughs> Diane, I don't even know my own name. But <laughs> Diane and, and James were my parents. So I had little homages in that of my dad, like showing where he got his watch at you know at the flea market because he renovates watches and clocks. And you know, my mom looking at the doing Twitter, I mean uh, doing FaceTime with me where you just see mm. this, you just see the top of her crown of her head. And they're both hilarious people in real life. Like all my friends, just I'll send them a video of them just talking in in the front seat on the way to a estate sale, and it's it's just solid comedy. So it seems like it's genetic, Paula. Paula, I I'm so. so happy to get to talk to you and find that you are as actually delightful and hilarious Thank as everything so I've ever read the, that you wrote or created. The movie is called Wine Country. Thank it you. is Thanks for so having me. funny. It is so sweet. It's I'm so just glad you liked it. Really, really a delight. Thank we you love so it. We love it too. We hope everyone else does too. Thanks, Paula. Thank you so much.